Okay, so my name is Professor Ron Jeeves. I'm a trustee of the Abdullah Quilliam Society with res responsibility to restore the old mosque of Abdullah Quilliam, which he founded in 1888 um, and opened in this building in 1890. Um, this is the first organized Muslim organization in the UK, the Liverpool Muslim Institute, and was based here in the old Quilliam Mosque. Uh, we are today hosting MacFest. And we're very excited to have everybody here, and we'll be taking them on a tour of the, uh, of the old mosque, showing them exactly how that mosque looked um, around about 1894. So you'll be able to get a good experience, I hope. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about Abdullah Quilliam, he was a, a solicitor uh, and journalist in this city from a very well-known upper middle class family. And he went to Morocco uh, in the late 1880s. And when he came back to Liverpool, he announced in the media that he had converted to Islam. And not content with just being a Muslim, he said, I'm going to convert as many British people to Islam as I possibly can. Um, I'm going to be active, and we will open a mosque here in this city. And that's what he did. He converted, we think, around about 250 um, men, women, and families to Islam during his life here in Liverpool uh, and established what was a very successful um, Muslim convert community, but not just converts. Um, there were Muslim uh, merchants um, from Manchester who used to come here and pray. And he also used to go to Manchester um, to do various activities there like marriages and funerals. And also the sailors, many of the sailors at that time in the British merchant fleet were coming into Liverpool um, they, and they also used to come here and pray and sometimes you had very very famous um, people from the Muslim world would also come here because they knew there was a mosque in Liverpool so there were sometimes Amirs and all kinds of very powerful Muslim leaders came here too so this is a very historic place um, it's, you could say this is where Islam was established um, in, in the British Isles. So, so yeah, so welcome Thank to you. everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> enjoy your day. Thank you.
Abdullah. My name is Mumin Khan. I'm the chief executive of Abdullah Kulyam Society, which is the home of Britain's first mosque. We are very delighted and privileged to have a visit by the family of Macfest, who have come from many different cities and to be here to, for a tour of Britain's first mosque. I'm sure we've just finished the tour now and I'm sure they have enjoyed the history of Britain's first mosque, which was established by an Englishman in the name of William Henry Cullion. And you probably would see many of the videos portraying some of the history that he started. He became Muslim um, in visiting Morocco in 1887 and he started the congregation here in Rome, 8 to 10 Rome Terrace and opened the first mosque on a Christmas day, 1889. And the mosque was closed from 1908 up until 2014 when we reopened it after 106 years of closure. It has been a blessing for the British Muslim and the international public to be able to reopen Britain's first mosque and bring it back as it was in the 1800s. So it's been a pleasure to welcome the family of Macfest and I'm sure they have enjoyed it and we have enjoyed having them here at Britain's first mosque. If you'd like to come for a visit to tour the Britain's first mosque, please make sure you give us a call and arrange an appointment to be in the place and learn the history of this historic mosque here in Liverpool. I have with me our youngest imam for the oldest mosque, Sheikh Wabdar Saleh, who started way back in June, June 2014. He will talk to you more about the programs that we do here in the Masjid. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. In the name of Allah, the most beloved, the most merciful, I'm your Buddha, Allah, Imam of the Mosque, alhamdulillah. I was appointed in 2014 when it was just a small, small room that we used to pray in with about four or five people that joined the congregation. And alhamdulillah, with Allah's will and power, it's been able to expand, refurbish the Mosque, alhamdulillah, and to look at the history of Abdullah Kulliam and what Sheikh Abdullah Kulliam, rahmatullah alayhi, has done about 100 years ago and we're trying to do everything that he's done already so you see we've started the, the Arabic Madrasa the Quranic schools Alhamdulillah and there's about 60 to 80 students already within the school so Alhamdulillah to have the space to do that and perform Islam in a non-Islamic country is a huge ni'mah it's a huge bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as uh, Uncle Mumin has mentioned everyone is welcome to visit the mosque Give us a call, inshallah, and you're all welcome, inshallah, for a tour and to learn about Islam. That it's not 20 or 10 years ago, Islam has been in Great Britain more than 100 years. And alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. If you'd like to bring schools, we have many uh, primary schools, secondary schools, universities, colleges. Do bring two students to have a tour of Britain's first mosque. Please give us a call if you're an organization. We welcome the organizations to come. We did not put it to the face of the Quran, yeah. then I'll read some translations for those who don't understand the same problem. I'll read to the Lord in the Shaykh of the And speaking about paradise, 
you'll have whatever your soul desires. And you will have whatever you call upon. All of that in paradise is hospitality from the most forgiven Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no one better than those who call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who call to God Almighty. But um, actually, there are two giants of the Abdullah Kulim society. You'll hear a lot about Abdullah Kulim on this trip, and of course he is the giant, because without him, this wouldn't exist. But there's another giant who needs to be mentioned here. And that's a gentleman called Akbar Ali, who is the founder of the Abdullah Kulim society. And he's a bridge between Manchester and Liverpool too, because he came across as a student. He had a scholarship. His parents wanted him to go to um, an establishment that they considered better than Manchester. Um, but he was a passionate hockey fan. And at that time, the Indian hockey team were playing in the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, and therefore he came to Manchester so he could watch his favorite sport. And he became a pioneer of the Victoria, I think it's the Victoria Park Mosque in Manchester. Um, and then he came to this city with his first employment and he became also a pioneer of the al Wakma Mosque in this city. So he bridges the two cities and I first met Akbar Ali uh, when I, I think in the final year of my professorship at Chester University, I was about to come set up a, a lecture series between the Abdullah Kulim Society and the Liverpool Holds Theology Department um, to look at the early history of Muslims in Britain, inviting scholars to come and speak. We did that and we had a number of very celebrated scholars came. And then one day, Akbar Ali completely and utterly shocked me. He came to me and he said, Ron, why don't you write the biography of Abdul Kulim? And I said, because I'm not a historian. And he said, yes, but you know so much about it, I'm sure you can do it. I went to a real historian, um, a very celebrated historian. His first mosque. William first had this building, number eight, and it is in this building, and this building we know exactly what it looked like in 1894. How do we know that? Because there was a Turkish journalist who came from Istanbul and stayed here with William for a number of weeks, and he wrote a, a small pamphlet or book in which he describes exactly even the furniture, the walls, what Quran verses, where they were, everything. Absolutely detailed. So that's my vision. My vision is to restore this building exactly to that 1894 vision. Yeah? Yes. Already an interest in the Orient. Merchants were coming backwards and forwards, um, writings were being translated, and so. It's interesting to see that already, although some of these features were added by Quilliam, you can see already there's an oriental appearance to the, to the, to the building. This is what I would call Anglo-Saracenic art, you know, of the Georgian period. 
So Quillian didn't have to change everything. <laughs> he already had some. In, but this, this here, this, this, this is his, and we know that inside that one there was a Quranic verse, which mm. we all that we members wrote. So the institute founded by Quillian was called the Liverpool Muslim Institute. Later on, when it became a British organisation, there were people from other places than Liverpool. He changed it um, to make it reflect um, the whole of Britain. But, but initially he founded the Liverpool Muslim Institute. This is the members room for the Liverpool Muslim Institute. Now this room um, is an interesting room. When it's complete, we need to put the fireplace back. And we also need, we know that this had Victorian wallpaper. Okay. So we will, we will wallpaper it with, Victor, with Victorian wallpaper. And we know the, where the pictures and mirrors went on the walls and what Quran verses were there. So you had these little, in every way, it was like a Victorian religion of the Abrahamic tradition, mm -hmm. universal and continuing on from Judaism and Christianity. Yeah. That was his mission. Yeah. Okay. You know, so he wanted to kind of, in a way, he said, just as Islam has gone to China and it's gone to India and it's gone to many, many other countries and it mixes with, those, and it mixes with those cultures, so also it can mix with British culture too. So he took the British hymn book and he rewrote it. And he, re he rewrote it so that it fitted, rather than Christian Trinity, Muslim Tafi. Mm -hmm. So, and the people used to come and on Sundays they would sing these hymns rewritten to Allah in a Tawheed, form of Tawheed. Mm -hmm. So he went back. We know, we have that book, um, you know, so it's, it's Afghanistan. He sent the crown prince of Afghanistan across to this mosque with 2,300 guineas, which was, which was a lot of money back then, and it was donated to Quilliam, and actually there was no conditions on how he spent that money. In India? Yes, and with the press, he was then able to expand his activities. And the first thing he did with the press was to create a weekly newspaper, which becomes the first Muslim weekly newspaper in this country, a newspaper called The Crescent, which was published for 25 years every week using a press like this one. That newspaper was the main, and still remains, my main resource for all of my research. Mm -hmm. It's a brilliant resource because in there you have all the activities every week of what goes on in the mosque when Quillian goes on lecture. She took charge. Mm -hmm. oh. And she said, right. And she, she said, round the back of the building from the building works, she said there's old metal ladders and there's planks. Mm -hmm. And she said, everybody's scurrying around looking for the ladders and planks and we brought them back and we made a ramp. No. Use, an use an aluminium ladder mm -hmm. and we put the planks on it and, and we got we had some ropes so we then tied the ropes to the back to hold it back because mm -hmm. otherwise it would have gone too fast and killed somebody <coughs> and then we and then we were kind of maneuvering it down even then we couldn't do it so she turned around to brother Moomin and she said Quillian used to say when he was one of his big things about when he would talk to politicians he was very keen that British politicians um, had good relationships with the Muslim world and he used to say to them you have to be aware that Queen Victoria as the Empress has more Muslim citizens in our empire mm, yeah. than the Ottoman yeah, yeah, yeah. Empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 109 million Muslims were, were, were in the British Empire. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so he used to say she is Queen of the Muslims too, not yes. just the Muslims. <laughs> Charles or the King Charles, he's, you know, has the relation. No, he with does. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm also here, very yeah. strong relations with, with, with Muslims yeah. in this country too. Uh, he, he's the patron of Madrasa. Um, Quilliam started the school. His curriculum, even then, in terms of today's madrasas, was extremely modern. Because Quilliam wanted both a studies in Islam for the new convert children, but he also wanted them to have the best possible education of West, Western standards of education. So it was a mixed curriculum, Islamic studies plus 
geography, history. Um, they would also do um, languages, modern languages, Arabic. He developed it, first of all, this was the first classroom. In order to um, convince people that they should send their children to his school, um, obviously just starting a school is difficult. William was a highly intelligent man. He, he went to the Liverpool Muslim Institute. Um, sorry, not the Liverpool Muslim. No, what's, the, what's the name of the school? Um, Beatles, but Paul McCartney went there too. Thank you, Liverpool Institute. Um, he, he went there and his children were all highly intelligent too. So in order to show his conviction and his faith in what he was doing, his first students were his own children. So very heavily when you know when she she was the treasurer here um, and a prominent member of the community and we discovered recently her grave and we've put a headstone on her grave now. Yeah. So, how, old, how old was she when she converted? No, no, she, she was 19 years old when she converted. Mm -hmm. She was about 35 when she died mm -hmm. from fever. Mm -hmm. She had a very, very difficult life, um, but she was an absolute rock of this community. Mm -hmm. um, her story is like something out of the early history of Muslims. She, she went to a lecture of Quilliam um, in Birkenhead, not to do with Islam. She went there because he was lecturing, because he was into anti-alcohol, mm -hmm. and he was a part of what was called the temperance movement. She went there to hear his temperance lecture, because she was, a, she was already a secretary of a, of a temperance movement. Um, so, at 19. She went down, she was sitting right at the very end of the lecture. Quilliam mentioned there is one Abrahamic faith, the last of the Abra Abrahamic faiths, that does not drink alcohol, it forbids alcohol. Sitting next to her was the very first convert that Quilliam had managed to attract. He said, I'll introduce you to him. So she went to Quilliam and she asked him, and he didn't have time to talk to her at that point, but he gave her a copy of his Quran and in English. And he said, take the Quran to your home. Her family were very, very devout Christians. When she came home and said where she had been and that she, that she had met a Muslim, and so they locked her up. And she was locked into her bedroom for six months. But what her family didn't know was that she had Quilliam's Quran with her. And she read the Quran again and again and again and again for six months. And at the end of that six months, she said, I am now a Muslim for the rest of my days. And she went and she found Quilliam. Then her family married her. Um, that was the only way that she could stop the punishment. They married her to a Christian gentleman to try and get her away from Islam. She converted him <laughs> after, after, after the marriage. And she converted her two sisters also. So, you know, and she became the treasurer uh, of, of, the, of the Liverpool Muslim Institute. And for many, many years, no one really knew about her, but we knew that her grave was in Anfield Cemetery because Quilliam had described how he had been at her death, and that her, at her death, her last, with her last breath, she said the Shahada. And, and, and then he said how he buried her with a Muslim funeral in Anfield Cemetery, mm -hmm. which at that time had no other Muslim graves in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was no marking. So the grave was found by a, a beautiful brother who has a Muslim school in London. Yeah. Um, and he... he what was his name? Uh, it's Hamid, isn't Hamid, it? Hamid, yes. Hamid yes. Patel, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And when we knew where the grave was, we then, again, Amir Ascaris book here, pledged two Ramadans ago that we would raise from the Sisters of Liverpool. We thought it should be a local effort mm -hmm. to raise it from the Sisters of Liverpool to put a headstone on her grave. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, we found one of her poems, and so it now is very clear there, first Muslima, and then one of her, her poem is marked on, the, on, the, on our headstone, and we had, we had a magnificent, magnificent day here. Um, to, uh, 21st of January this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which was in the newspaper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If you hadn't already guessed. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, but they did the dead job in that way. So, Behind you, you can see the old fireplace, mm -hmm. and in this kitchen, um, the food would have been prepared for the Eid feasts. Mm -hmm. uh, Isa is a prophet of Islam, yes. Yes. and he is the prophet of these people, yeah. the Christian people. Yeah. So we should also acknowledge him. Yeah. 
He said, but we will not do it the way the Christians do it because we're Muslims. Yeah. So he said, we will have we will we will have an Islamic Christmas where we will honor Isa. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way they would do it um, was that they would, and all the feasts at that time, they would in, they would bring in the poor children that were homeless on the streets of Liverpool. Oh, At that time, there were thousands of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and they would bring in, a, and, and at the height of that, from this kitchen, mm -hmm. the community would come on Christmas Day, when everyone else was feasting and celebrating and drinking and everything, they would come with Quilliam, and they would bring all these poor orphan children from the city, the homeless, and they were feeding up to six or seven hundred at the peak of activities. For, he said, this is an Islamic Christmas. Now, Quilliam's a journalist, okay? He doesn't miss a trick when it comes to publicity. So he would call up all the newspapers in the city and say, come, come and see how Muslims celebrate Christmas. And he would then say to them, look, I'll put a question to you. The journalist would be all here, and he'd say, I'll put a question to you. You're all feasting, drinking alcohol, getting drunk. He said, but you tell me, how do you think that Isa himself would have celebrated? He said, would he have, would he have feasted and got drunk or would he have fed the poor? Mm. And the journalist saw it like, well, I guess he would have fed, fed the poor. And he said, and the same with our prophet Muhammad too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, said, because, he said, so we... Um, and so of course this became the first project really to get mm. this mosque back um, to be a functioning um, place of prayer again. And um, we've now changed it a little bit because now that the other side is complete for daily salat, we no longer have to have daily salat here. So we can now begin the restoration of this building back to Quilliam's original looking um, building. Behind, behind this wall here, in the brickwork, you can actually see um, the the arches that he had put in to mark out his angle. So uh, the converts were from all classes, including working class families, middle class families, and upper class families. Also coming were the at this picture, mm -hmm. that's what you're looking at. So you can see the arch here, yeah. the arch there, and then this back area through there, and we want to get this restored. Um, British woman in this area here, but also some of them are just sailors who have met, yeah. you know, yeah. um, British women and women and wanted to marry. At that time, some of the sailors were beginning to settle. Mm. Um, rather than the dangers of being at sea, mm. it was much better to open up hostels and cafes yeah. mm. um, for their fellow sailors when they were coming. Yeah. So you started to get hostels opening up in places like Liverpool, Cardiff. Um, London, where the docks were. So some of the sailors, then of course they had no women, because there weren't Muslim women here. So they would, you know, life being what it is, <laughs> you know, um, they would find partners inside, you know, the British community, and there were a whole number of marriages that took place. When I first began my work, researching the Muslim community in Britain, I actually found some very, very elderly men and women who were, the, who were those mixed marriages? Mm. Um, and I interviewed them, um, how they brought up their children. Fascinating. This is Kesha Shiraz. I'm the founder and executive director of MacFest. And it's been a real pleasure for us to visit this amazing place. Look at this, where we are today, the Abdullah Quilliam Society. It's part of our special heritage tour uh, for MacFest, and it's been really an amazing event for us. We had people coming from right across the country, would you believe, from Leeds, from Manchester, Stockport, Birmingham, North Wales, and the content of the lecture we had has been terrific by Ron Jeeves. We learned things we didn't know about it, it's got our minds working, we toured the mosque upstairs, downstairs, and the favourite part for me was the gallery right at the top. We can't wait to visit when it's all been done. And we've actually prayed also in the old mosque. And thank you so much to the management, to the trustees, our hosts, and thank you in particular for the marvelous feast. It's been a terrific, 
very successful day. Thank you so much. clay ranks of imperial grooves. Reserved for only the finest tombs, my kind map out the trade between civilizations. One squat stallion for 50 bales of silk. They rolled out the silk road before us, all the way to the walled city of